So then I just finished my mountain leader assessment course a couple of days ago. Um, I'm out on the beautiful Trussocks in Scotland at the moment, treating myself. Obviously, it wasn't enough doing five full days on the hills, so I thought I'd do a few more hills. <laughs> so what I'm going to be talking about today is just my five top tips on getting through that course, a few little details about your training, your kit, stuff like that. I won't be talking about the whole detail of the course, how it's made up, stuff like that. Um, if anyone wants me to go through that in a, a follow-up video or an in-depth thing on kit, kit I carried, let us know and we can do that as well. Point number one, train hard, fight easy. Now, obviously, when I say that, that's a military term, and you know the way it's normally uh, used is when you're in the military and you're training for you know conflicts, for exercises, stuff like that. But I think it applies really well for something like the the mountain leader course. So what I'm talking about is actually training as hard as you possibly can, so that when you go onto the course, it is actually you know as easy as it can be and it is quite a tough course so what we're talking about here is navigating properly so using your map your compass your pacings your bearings your timings and doing all the stuff that you need to do whilst you're on your course we're also talking about um, navigating during night time navigating in tough conditions so bad weather conditions don't just go out when it's a nice weather day like it's here today go out in tough conditions to actually test yourself and also doing things like carrying the actual weight that you're going to carry on the day. Okay, so when you're on the course, you're going to be doing an ex-bed where you're going to be carrying three days worth of gear. So get your Bergen, your rucksack, whatever you want to call it, packed out with all the kit that you will be using on the course. Um, it's the right weight, you know, the, the right amount of rations, the, the water that you're going to carry, or your tent, you know, everything you're going to carry so that you are training to actually pass that course as opposed to just going out for a fun day on the hills. Point number two then, kit. Now, I did mention it briefly in point number one, but what I'll do is I'll expand a little bit more on that. So what I'm talking about here is making sure that your kit is absolutely fully, 100% prepared for when you go on the course. Now, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't think it's a great idea to go out every single day when you go on the hills with three days worth of kit on your back, you know, your rations, your water, your tent and all that sort of stuff. But you do definitely want to be doing that a few times before you go on the course. Only by doing that, you'll work out exactly what works for you, what doesn't work for you, um, any improvements that you're gonna make, how you're gonna pack your kit, where you're gonna put your stuff. Only by practicing will you work that thing out. And also there's a couple of really vital aspects to your kit that you're gonna to have to make sure is 100% good to go before you go on your course. What number one I'd say of that is your boots, all right? Now, make sure you've got two pairs of boots, I'd say, well worn in, that are well, you know, supportive, ankle support, waterproof, all that sort of good stuff, ready for the course, because you'll do two days um, walkabouts, what you'd call in the military walkabouts, so navigation days where you come back in, and then you'll do three days uh, out on the X-bed. If your boots get sopping wet on those first couple of days, like they did on my course, then you don't want to be taking those same boots straight out, sopping wet on your three-day X-bed. So it's a good idea to have two pairs of boots, worn in, good to go. Now, I didn't experience any blisters at all during my course. A couple of other people on my course did, um, and that's only going to put more pressure on you. So make sure they are worn in and they're good to go. Another thing is the tent. Make sure your tent is, you know, absolutely you're 100% happy with it. Don't buy a tent before the course. Put it up in your garden and think, yeah, that's good to go. Get it out on the hills in the bad conditions where the winds are blowing a gale, hammering down with rain, and actually test it properly. Another thing I'd say is important, um, you know, other than your, your navigation, but that's just more of a skill than the kit itself, is your water carriage, okay? So on our training course, we was told a few times, oh yeah, you only need a litre of water. I, I personally don't believe that whatsoever. I know other people out there might say something different. Um, I carried a litre in a small bottle, and the reason why I carried it in a small bottle is so that when you was in your, your tent at night, um, you can actually get water down your neck easier than trying to drink out of a camelback tube. But then I carried a litre and a half in an actual camelback, and I replenned that camelback a little bit with that water bottle too. So it come in useful having those two different sources of water. And I personally think it worked well for me having two and a half litres um, during the three day X bed. Um, on the first day where you have quite a long walk in, I used up virtually all of that two and a half litres on the way in. 
So that's just my point of view on that side of it. Point number three then, stay switched on at all times, right? So when you're out doing your navigation and the main emphasis of the course is actually on the navigation side of it, don't switch off when you're not leading a leg, okay? Make sure that you've planned it, you've prepped it, you've worked out your timings, your distance, your bearing, all that sort of stuff. And as you're moving along, make sure you know where you are at all times because guess what? You are gonna get asked by the instructor when you're not expecting it, right, where are we now? And if you haven't stayed switched on and worked out where you are and kept tabs on where you are as you're moving, you're gonna get caught out. So that's just a basic one there, but it's one that kind of, there was a couple of people on the course that wasn't expecting that. Um, and you do need to stay switched on at all times for that side of it. Point number four then, coursemanship. Now that's not a word that's well known to a lot of civilians out there. Any ex-military out there will probably understand what I'm talking about. In broader terms, it means teamwork, okay? So basically when you're on a course, you have to play the role of the person that you're you know, expected to be. So when you're leading the group, you're, you're in charge, aren't you? When you're not leading the group, keep it zipped, but actually help that person out where you can by following along behind that person, not going off on your own little sort of bit of navigation, not slowing them down by stopping and looking at your map. You need to, do, you need to know where you are when you're moving, but if you need to look at your map, you need to do it on the move. So what I found is some of the other guys on the course were being a little bit selfish, by thinking about themselves, worrying about themselves, as opposed to, okay, I need to think about what's going on here and the bigger picture. Don't just think about yourselves, think as a team and remember that word coursemanship. Help out the person who's actually in appointment as such when they are and you know, just try and help them out when you can without making it too obvious. Point number five. So all I'm gonna talk about now is the other aspects of the course. Now, as I've mentioned a second ago, the main emphasis of the course is on navigation and you will need to be 100% very good at your navigation and micro navigation, okay? But there are the other aspects to the course. So things like knowing your flora and fauna of the area, and then the geology of the area and your rope work, okay? Don't turn up on the course, putting your head in the sand and thinking, they're not really going to bother with that because they will they're going to ask you questions on the local flora and fauna things like the heather and all that sort of stuff you are going to cover your rope work where you're going to be doing your confidence roping where they're going to ask you about an abseil method where, they, where you're going to be doing your bee laying what i did on my course i hadn't actually done any of this in between my training course and my um, assessment course but what i did is a couple of weeks beforehand i went away with a friend of mine who's you know more up on up to speed on his rope work and we went through that in detail. Once we'd practiced it, I then practiced it on my own back home with my rope and made sure I was good to go for the course and I had no problems at all. So all I'm saying is, you know, make sure all those other aspects that are covered on the course, which are detailed on the mountain training website, make sure you're good to go on those as well, not just for your, you know, walking around on the hill stuff. So then that's just my five tips on the actual assessment course, a summer mountain leader assessment course. Again, I'm not being, Billy Big Nuts about anything. I'm just passing on a few of my points that I picked up on the course that might help someone out when you actually go on your course. Anyone else that's been on the course recently, maybe put your comments in, in the comment section below. Let me know, or those people watching the video, let us know how you got on, any things that come out on your course, because everyone's experiences are gonna be different. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll be seeing you again soon. Stay prepared.